Hey guys, thank you for tuning in. We're going to talk a little bit about the loss of smell or the loss of olfaction. My name is Aaron Rogers. I'm an advanced ear, nose, and throat associates along with my partners, Dr. Steve Bomley, Sam Michelson, and Andy Goldie. The loss of smell or the sense of smell we term olfaction and is served by the olfactory nerve where it directly exits the brain and enters the roof of the sinuses and the top of the nose. There's hundreds of receptor genes and receptor types that sort of make up this olfactory epithelium that lines this nasal passage and lines the roof of that nose to give us the sense of smell. Basically, the sense of smell is detecting chemicals in the air between these hundreds of receptor types working in combination and at different uh, sort of sensitivity levels. We can detect thousands or tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of different uh, specific smell types. The sense of smell also is incredibly important to the sense of taste. Most of the complex flavors of food are actually uh, contributed to by our sense of smell, not so much by the tongue or the sense of taste. Reasons why we might lose our sense of smell, first of all, uh, very short term, we could have swelling from like a viral infection or a sinus infection or blockage in the nose, a foreign body, or a polyp, simply just preventing airflow from getting up to the top of the sinuses and airflow from getting, preventing airflow from getting up to that olfactory epithelium and preventing the stimulation of the olfactory sense. Uh, we can have viral infections that directly harm the nerve. Here in 2020, we're having the uh, COVID-19 uh, viral pandemic and one of the key symptoms uh, of early infection seems to be a loss of smell or a change in smell, but we see this every year with or without pandemic. We see it with the flu virus and other cold viruses also can cause a viral loss of the sense of smell. We see it from patients on chemotherapy or other neurological medications. We see it from surgery in the sinuses or on the nasal roof. It's not a common complication of sinus surgery. Usually sinus surgery helps the sense of smell by relieving infection but we have seen sort of more aggressive surgery or some unexpected findings after uh, patients have surgery in this area to uh, actually damage the sense of smell permanently. Tumors we're always a little bit worried about. Could the sudden loss of smell be a result of some kind of a mass or a tumor in that olfactory nerve? Obviously very concerning, requiring more workup. Uh, finally, we see a slow decline in the sense of smell just related to aging and age-related changes. Uh, and in fact, some scientists have postulated that maybe we actually can see it a little quicker in patients who are prone to dementia. So this is kind of scary, a little bit uh, nerve wracking to think that you lose your sense of smell in your 50s or 60s. Does this mean you're gonna get dementia 15 or 20 years later? We're really not sure, but there seems to be a little bit of a loose correlation that we're investigating there. Uh, the sense of taste is a little different. So I won't talk too much about taste, but we have taste buds lining the tongue. This contributes so much to the flavor of food, of course, uh, or to the kind of coarse tastes of food. Really, we're only detecting with the tongue the flavors, four flavors, sweet, salty, sour, and bitter. Maybe a fifth flavor, umami, which is the flavor of kind of a meaty flavor or the flavor of MSG. And finally, one of my favorite flavors, the piquant flavor. Uh, this piquant flavor is basically spiciness or hotness or the taste of peppers, which is stimulated by another nerve entirely, but uh, certainly adds to the food taste. So I won't talk much about taste buds and taste here, but basically we're just discussing the sense of smell a little bit. On a CT scan that we commonly get uh, with sinus and smell complaints, this is what a common CT scan through the sinuses might look like. We have here the eyeballs you can see on either side and the brain up above. This area right in the middle that's circled here is basically where your smell nerves are coming down from the brain into the sinuses. This area is very prone to swelling from infection or polyps. Uh, and likely is uh, where you might have some changes on a scan if we are losing our sense of smell. So a CT scan is pretty important, uh, or an MRI scan is pretty important for basically assessing this area when there is smell loss. And we see in this patient here, there's a lot of that sort of gray swelling. Unlike the prior scan, there's a lot of gray swelling in this patient. And all that gray swelling is basically blocking off the sense of smell, contributing to diminished smell or anosmia or hyposmia or other medical terms for that. So what do we do with smell loss? We, uh, first of all, test, test, test. There is some reasonably good validated testing available called the University of Pennsylvania uh, Smell Identification Test. It's a fairly simple, about a 20 minute, 40 part uh, scratch and sniff test that's been validated across populations. What we see is that people who feel like they really lost their sense of smell but they can still taste probably have about 75% smell left. 
Uh, people who lose their sense of taste, uh, that's really kind of troublesome if they really can't even taste good food anymore or maybe can sort of coarsely identify some sweet versus salty but don't have any other flavor sense. Uh, they probably have lost a lot more sense of uh, smell uh, than they really are appreciating. We've also noticed that women tend to have a better sense of smell than men uh, and also women who are pregnant have an exceptional sense of smell due to some hormonal changes. So that's pretty, pretty interesting there. Uh, we also do like to get imaging as we just showed. So those CT scans or maybe MRI scans of that area of the sinuses or the brain to look for any physical lesions or infections or polyps that might be contributing. We do a little nasal endoscopy in the office as well to further assess that area to see if there's anything physically blocking off the sense of smell or see if there's redness or other signs of infection. Uh, we usually look for allergies too. So could there be allergies contributing to some of this swelling that might be part of your workup? Nasal polyps are a common inflammatory condition of the sinuses leading to infection and loss of smell that we'll be looking for. How are we treating this? So um, acutely, we may be recommending some glucocorticoid steroid tablets to take or maybe even injections to take to try to uh, reduce inflammation acutely. Supplements or vitamins have also been described and are out there in the literature with some soft evidence that they may improve the sense of smell over time. There's actually something called smell rehabilitation, probably augmenting the natural process of smell rehabituation, where basically things are kind of recovering uh, after your acute smell loss or smell change uh, for several weeks or months as your brain is sort of recovering. The olfactory epithelium and olfactory nerves of interest are some of the only nerves in the body that are found to reproduce and regenerate. That does not mean if you have a complete loss of smell that your smell is going to come back, but we do have in the lab some in vitro evidence of nerve regeneration which really does hold out some promise for us for some of these rehabilitation and smell retraining strategies. So if you feel like you have lost some of your sense of smell and olfaction, I hope you understand a little bit more about where it's coming from. Hope you come in and get checked out by myself or one of my colleagues or maybe another ENT in your area. Certainly there's things that we can do to look harder at the causes and some of the treatments that may be available. Thank you very much. You can find us anytime online, of course, at advancedentpc.com in the lower right of your screen. And stay well, be safe. Thank you.